covert narcissists are passive aggressive and people with negativistic personality disorder which is not included regrettably and wrongly in the diagnostic and statistical manual but people with this suggested personality disorder are also by definition passive aggressive passive aggression is the externalization of aggression directing aggression at others in ways which are difficult to prove subtle under the radar subterranean surreptitious hidden this is um, by far the most pernicious form of aggression this aggression is a signal to the environment you have breached my boundaries i would like you to modify your behavior anger for example is a form of aggression a lot of aggression is ritualized aggression is sublimated expressed in socially acceptable ways we can cope with all these forms of aggression because they are overt they are clear sometimes they are ostentatious and conspicuous we don't need to second guess we don't need to be on the alert hyper vigilant walking on eggshells but passive aggression is ambient it's in the atmosphere you can't put your finger on it you can't pinpoint it or pin it down it is everywhere and nowhere at the same time and this is why it's very very toxic it's a little like air pollution you know you don't see it it's not visible but it's definitely there affecting your ability to breathe the long-term health of your lungs and your longevity passive aggression is the tool the instrument of the weak when they don't feel confident enough to express overt aggression or, or in circumstances where society frowns upon the upon open aggression then people who are weak and meek somehow inferior disenfranchised um, usually resort to passive aggression because here's the rule aggression must out one way or another aggression has to be expressed there is no way to not express aggression that's a common myth when people tell you you should control your anger anger management oh, this is nonsense anger management is not nonsense in the sense that can it can redirect your aggression it can mold it and shape shift it and form it in ways which would be condoned by society and accepted by it yeah other people would feel a lot more comfortable um, if you were to learn how to manage your anger but anger has to be expressed and will be expressed all forms of aggression and aggression transmogrifies it wears many guises brutal honesty is aggression many forms of humor especially dark humor this is aggression so we are we are being aggressive we act aggressively even when we are not aware that we are because society has afforded us numerous channels transmission mechanisms and camouflages that let us go on with life with other people coexist collaborate with them without rocking the, the boat to the point of drowning capsizing and drowning so aggression is all around us i would venture to say that, aggre that aggression is the most dominant and most widespread and ubiquitous effect i think it's by far the most common expression of our internal world and yet passive aggression is when you hide this when you pretend that you are not being aggressive when you project your aggression and you blame the other party for being aggressive even though they are merely being reactive to your passive aggression so it's really bad it's really bad because it involves dishonesty deception sometimes self-deception and an inability to interact honestly and openly with other people and again this is the weapon of the weak and the collapsed and the and the hateful and the envious this is their weapon now one of the main instruments of aggression 
is known as neging, N-E-G-G-I-N-G. It's short for negation, negating someone. And one of the ways to negate someone, I mean, you can negate someone by simply telling them, you know, you're bad, you're evil, you're stupid, you're ugly, or this, or that. You can negate someone by resonating very powerfully with their own bad object. They suspect that they're ugly, and you confirm it to them. They think they may be stupid, and you inform them that they are. This is, reson this is a way of resonating with their internal bad object, with the voices inside them that keep informing them that they are bad, unworthy, inadequate, failures, losers, stupid, ugly, and so on. So that's another way of negging. Negging openly, negging by resonating with a bad object. But there is a third way of negging. And it's, it's really, it takes, you know, it takes a lot, in my view, a lot of inner viciousness, wickedness. And I'm talking about backhanded compliments and what I call toxic help or sadistic help. Backhanded, backhanded compliments are repeated and escalating insults and personal attacks disguised as compliments or even as flattery. Backhanded compliments compliment what you do, but at the same time attack you for who you are. Remember this formula. When you get a compliment, when you receive a compliment, and this compliment applies to something you're doing, some choice you've made, decision, action, um, something you've done, and at the same time it criticizes you, puts you down, uh, negates you, humiliates you, shames you. That's a backhanded compliment. They compliment what you do, but they attack who you are. Backhanded compliments are meant to leverage your vulnerabilities, to push your buttons, to get a reaction and a rise out of you. Backhanded compliments can and often do incorporate public shaming. They adversely affect self-esteem. In extreme cases, with long-term exposure to backhanded compliments, this can create mini-trauma. Now, toxic or sadistic help is succor or advice that comes replete with extreme devaluation disguised as tough love. So this is not constructive criticism. This is destructive criticism. This is not advice. This is a way to trip you up, to set you up for failure. This is not succor. This is manipulation and taking over. So there's extreme devaluation somewhere at the core of, of toxic help. And it is often disguised as tough love. If you were to confront the purveyor and the source of toxic help, they're going to indignantly throw, throw it back at you and say, what's wrong with you? Don't you see? I'm the only one you can rely on for, for brutal honesty. Don't you see? You can trust only me. I love you. I'm being tough with you. I'm being critical with you. I'm being harsh with you precisely because I love you. It's for your own good. Someone needs to do this. Both backhanded compliments and toxic help involve brutal, disempathic honesty. Honesty, yes, but it's aggressive, it's cruel, it's destruct destructive. It's aimed to devastate you. There's no empathy there. There's no empathy there. The person who is being honest with you doesn't ask himself or herself, uh, what would be the effect of my effect? What would be the effects of my honesty? They don't ask themselves, themselves how would I have felt if someone told me this? So they don't have empathy. They're dark personalities. This kind of honesty is a form of passive aggression. And both uh, backhanded compliments and toxic help are forms of intermittent reinforcement. Because you are getting a mixed signal, a dual message. Part of it is very good, perfect, idealized. 
part of it is very bad, devalued and inferior. And this is the same sentence, in the very same sentence. This creates total disorientation, confusion. It's positive reinforcement, uh, intermittent reinforcement. I'm sorry, hot and cold, black and white. Half of it is positive reinforcement, half of it is negative. Unfavorably comparing you to other people and insults disguised as uh, collective criticism, they are actually forms of passive aggression. Criticizing you, not your actions, it's a form of passive aggression. Let me give you a few examples. Well, you look fabulous. I would have never had the courage to wear this dress. That's a backhanded compliment. I'm so proud of you that you quit smoking. Too bad it already stained your teeth. That's a backhanded compliment. Congratulations for winning the competition or passing the exam. Maybe one day you will give a, will, you will give a, a, a real sport some try. What you're doing is not serious. Um, another kind of sentence. Don't worry about being overweight. In some cultures, being overweight is considered very attractive. Uh, another one. People are attracted to intelligence, not necessarily to good looks. So don't worry about your looks. You're intelligent. <laughs> Translation. You are obese and ugly. Next. Uh, Many of these passive-aggressive techniques leverage your narcissism and paranoia. Everyone has narcissistic defenses, even healthy people. And everyone, to some extent, is wary and cautious. You don't have to be hypervigilant to be on your toes. And, and so they leverage this. They leverage this and they play you for a fool. They manipulate you. As I said, they push your buttons. Let me, let me give you an example of non-constructive, humiliating criticism disguised as advice, or succor, or help, or assistance. Let me fix this for you. You've never been good with your hands. Or, being a good parent is not everything in life. It's overrated. Or, don't try to do this. You're not good at it. Or, having a boyfriend or a girlfriend is not the end all and be all. Being alone is sometimes good. Failing to find a boyfriend or a girlfriend doesn't mean that something's wrong with you. Emphasizing your failures and then pretending to give you succor and assistance and compassion and affection all the time, emphasizing, repeating, Reminding you of your failures that hurt. Or, I don't mind the costs of being with you. It's not easy. You're a difficult person. But that's what friends are for. Or, this dress would look fabulous on, on you once you had lost some weight. Right. I think you got the point. And so, be wary and careful around such people they don't seek uh, they don't have your interests at heart they don't seek your welfare and well-being they're not benevolent they're malicious they're malevolent they penetrate your defenses by pretending to be friends but pretending to love you or to care for you somehow this gives them entry and once they're inside like a trojan horse they offload, they offload the insults, the devastation and the destruction, the pain, the hurt. They introduce you to your own shortcomings and failures. They, they remind you that you are constitutionally a loser, unworthy, unlovable. These are enemies, not friends. Stay away from them.